Hey, my name's Trent Harris. I work with Master Medical Equipment. I'm the clinical sales manager here at Master Medical. And I'm Mark Walker, one of the principal owners of Guardian Group Training, one of the preferred partners with Master Medical. Today we're going to talk to you about the Sapphire Infusion Pump. Mark, on the on the training side, I know you've been telling me you guys have been getting uh, you know quite a few requests uh, for pump specific training. Uh, can you just elaborate you know a little bit on that and what you guys are seeing out there? Yeah, Trent. One of the biggest things we've seen here lately is uh, the request uh, for training on the pump, mainly because of its simplicity. And I know that sounds uh, kind of counterintuitive, uh, but the truth is that most of the IV pumps that we have in the EMS field for any, either for inter, inter facility transports and for uh, uh, pre-hospital transport, uh, they're usually pretty complicated to use. Mm -hmm. And then when you throw something like the Sapphire in front of them and uh, you just have two buttons on the front, uh, you know, it's one of those things that kind of throws them off. And uh, so that's what we kind of hope to, uh, to accomplish today in this video is to kind of go over the simplicity of the Sapphire and uh, just give some basic operation and techniques for it. Yep. I'll, um, we'll actually do an, an unboxing of the pump itself. You, you're talking about the simplicity. I had um, I had a buddy that called me a while back and he said, you know, I've been in EMS a long time. Um, he had a patient that um, it was post cardiac arrest and they were transporting into the hospital. Blood pressure started to fall and he, he needed, uh, you know, to start some dopamine on that patient. And he said, man, I, you know, while ventilating, I just reached over the cabinet and grabbed my pump, you know, hung my, uh, hung my dopamine and started my infusion. And it, it was pretty much the easiest thing. Uh, he had ever done so I was kind of glad to hear that on the on my side of things yeah and you know speaking of that just the simple fact that there's like 40 different clinical care areas within the pump itself and each one of them can hold like what a thousand mm -hmm. medications so you can put any formulary of any med the concentration whatever you could possibly use uh, you know within your med set and just literally with the touch of the button you know you can pull up that med for easy administration mm -hmm. so let's get into the unboxing um, you know, I'm, I'm a paramedic, Mark's a paramedic, been in the field for several years. Uh, we won't go into that. But, you know, the, there was a pump prior to the Sapphire in the, in the EMS world, and one of the things uh, that got it off of the market, or the reason it was pulled from the market, uh, it was found to be grossly inaccurate. Uh, one of the things, uh, you know, that the high points of the Sapphire pump is the uh, accuracy of the pump is plus or minus 2.5%. Uh, with the industry standard being plus or minus five percent, that was uh, a huge thing uh, to me when I, you know, heard that it was how accurate the pump was. So this is the box uh, you will get with a new pump, and we're just going to go through it here and highlight some of the the features on it. These pumps are made over in Israel um, by the manufacturer is Eton Medical, and that is a great uh, group to work with. So inside the box. Got the pump itself, a cradle for securing the device, and a charging cord. Like Mark stated earlier, uh, the pump itself, on the face of the pump, there's only two buttons. Uh, and if you look at it, there's a stop button which stops an infusion immediately, and then the on off button which powers the device on and off. There are three um, indicator lights over on the left hand side. Uh, the the top, top light is just an alarm. Uh, anytime there's an alarm during uh, an infusion you will hear an audible um, alarm from the speaker and then this light will flash, will, uh, flash red. Uh, the next light is just a charge indicator that it indicates when the unit is charging. And then the bottom light is just a run. Uh, it will flash green during an infusion. Uh, one of the things I, I would like to highlight first. So there's a little gray um, arrow here and there is a red dot on the charging cord. This is actually, um, it's got a lock on the hub of this. We uh, here at Master Medical, our sister company Renew Biomedical, um, we do a lot of service on the Sapphire pumps. One of the things that uh, we do see from time to time is damage inside this port and I mean, I'm in EMS, I get it, we're rough on things. But this is made so that it locks into the charging uh, hub so that it doesn't just fall out when it's upright. So, Mark, if you would, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with this. 
Okay. Just disengage that. So you just grasp it up high and, and pull it out. If you get to yanking on the cord, it can cause damage um, to the ribbon inside of this port. Um, the pump itself, it's a touch screen. The screen is a pressure sensitive. Um, it's not a heat sensitive screen, so you know it's not like our, our cell phones where it's feeling the heat from our fingers. It's actually a pressure screen. Um, I don't have any... Man, how awesome is that in the EMS field too when you're operating these things in the rain and... With gloves on. And then the humidity with, you know, even if you've got, uh, you know, bloods or, or gosh, in the COVID days, you know, hand sanitizer. That's right. You know, things like that really makes for great operation. So I, I don't have any water in here for a demonstration. We could, you can literally cover the face of this with water uh, just to demonstrate how easy it is to still operate uh, even when the screen is, is wet. Um, they do have proprietary drip sets like most pumps. It's just a cartridge uh, that snaps into the side here. Um, and then this door. Uh, a lot of folks ask me, hey, what if that door gets knocked off uh, during an infusion? You know, is, is my med medication going to stop? Uh, the, the, whatever infusion is running will not stop. However, you do have to have this door in place to start a new infusion. So if for some reason this door gets sheared off uh, mid-infusion, uh, you don't have to worry about uh, your patient care at that time, but you will have to get it uh, repaired or replaced uh, prior to starting a new infusion. This cradle, uh, it's pretty simple. It's, um, it's just a plastic cradle, snaps into place. It is spring-loaded, so you can uh, have different mounting, mounting options if you need to hang it on an IV pole or the arm of a stretcher, whatever the case may be. So the, the drug library, if you're wondering about that, uh, that is maintained with the end user. Uh, we send a link um, upon uh, you purchasing the pump. We'll send you a link uh, from the manufacturer, and they will um, it, it will they will give you a download. Uh, one thing to note on the drug library: it is not um, compatible with Mac uh, iOS, so it has to be a Windows-based computer. You might have to select your clinical care area if you've got multiple uh, programming inside the pump. Then you just hit new infusion. And if you have a drug library stored on this pump, the number in the upper right hand corner, that's how many medications you have within your drug library. Um, let's just say we wanna start, uh, let's say a, a lidocaine infusion. Uh, to do the text and, and enter in uh, the medication, it's like the old T9 text. So I would have to hit the number five three times to get to the L. When I do that, uh, the number in the drug library goes down to one. So I've only got one medication entered in my library that starts with an L, uh, which should be lidocaine. So then I'll hit find in the lower right. And there's my lidocaine. My concentration, four milligrams per milliliter is already preloaded in my drug library. I select that. I enter in my patient weight. And two of these three parameters that pop up, we will enter in. and it calculates the third one. After that, you just hit OK, and there's a couple of confirmation screens that you will go through. At this time, you would have already had your tubing primed. And just insert the cartridge in the bottom first, then it just clips in to the metal tab at the top. Close your door, and you're ready to begin infusing. Uh, in the pump, if you need a low, medium, and high uh, level of authorization, that's available. Um, but it's, you know, you get your drug library built out, you upload it to the pumps, and basically you go to work. Yeah, so we, you know, we kind of hit on the specs there a little bit, but let's talk about some of the stuff that's that's real to the to our <coughs> end user, right? So the, to the EMS medic that's going to be out there uh, on the street that's going to be using that. Why is this going to be such a great um, tool for them and I, I tell you a couple of reasons one we've already hit on the fact that it's pretty much all weather I mean right it's it's splash resistant right we've got that pressure sensitive screen but I mean what about the fact that it's got a flow rate from like 0 0.1 milliliters to 999 right. I mean, where else are you gonna find that kind of range as far as the storage temperature operating temperature we get that question from time to time the operating temp is from 41 to 104 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, and storage is from negative 41 to 158 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So there's a pretty good range there, depending on where you're at in the country. 
um, you know, as far as operation and storing the pump. You're going to turn, take that thing out, turn it right on. It's going to work uh, just like it's been stored in your storage room for, you know, for a week or so. Uh, so that's a pretty great option for that as well. Plus the fact it's portability. I mean, come on. What else are you going to carry around in your in your cargo pants? Scrub pants, cargo pocket. It's awesome, man. Um, one thing that I did not mention earlier, uh, talking about the specs, that is huge, uh, especially in the EMS field, and that is battery life. This guy's got a very robust battery life. Um, it is 24 hours infusing at 125 cc's an hour. Um, I can't really think of any other device we have on the ambulance that has that type of battery life. I mean, even the, the cardiac monitor is not going to last that long. Yeah, and what's really cool about that is, is it's going to hold that charge too, right? So you take it off the charger, I mean, it's going to be good for a week. I mean, it's not like you have to cycle it back and put it back on the mm -hmm. charger. It's going to hold that charge for a week, two weeks, or whatever. Um, you know, so you, you, even if you forget to put it back on the charger, you don't have to worry about it not having that extended battery life. Uh, that's a pretty neat option as well. Yep. Um, it does come, uh, speaking of the warranty, it comes with a uh, two-year uh, manufacturer warranty. We have sold a few thousand of these pumps uh, over the last couple of years uh, since I've been with Master Medical. I have um, personally not had the first complaint. Everybody that gets this pump, they say, you know, look, it just works. I mean, and that's what we need uh, in the pre-hospital environment, in the emergency setting. We need something to work. We don't need to be fooling with it, uh, you know, trying to... Uh, well, I've got air in the line, or it won't clear the air, or, you know, it keeps giving me an alarm. These things, uh, the Sapphire just works, and that's, that's what we want to sell. This pump is the only um, pump on the market, as far as a new pump, that is rated for ground and air transport, um, which, which is a huge thing today. Yeah, and it, it's really important, too, knowing that this is uh, not only a single-channel pump, but it's also a multi-therapy pump, right? So you can run TPN, PCA. Uh, it's got a PCA box, lock box that, that you can get as well. It's an option. You can run piggybacks through it. I mean, epidurals. I mean, the sky's really the limit when it comes to this thing, and the portability of it allows for multiple pumps to be placed together. So there's optional mounts where you can put, what, up to three pumps side to side. Um, Correct. Yeah, Fernal Aviation makes um, a, a pump for the, the air medical world that uh, it hold, they've got a single, a double, and a triple mounted pump option. Well folks, um, I don't know much else we can say about this pump. Yeah, I think you can tell from the video we really like it and we're a fan of it here at Master Medical Equipment and Guardian Group. Uh, Mark, I'd like to thank you for uh, being on the show today and coming out and seeing us and talking a little bit about the pump. Yeah, Trent, I appreciate the invite and it's, uh, it's all I can tell you guys is just, uh, it's, great, it's a great device. The only way you can really appreciate it is get your hands on it. Uh, give these guys a call, let them uh, uh, come on out and show it to you, or, or come on into Jackson. We'd be happy to have you here and, and talk to you about it. Uh, but uh, it's a great great device. It's a wonderful device. I think it's going to change EMS as a whole. Mm -hmm. And uh, we look forward to be able to talk with you more about it in person or uh, online. Hey, if you like what you saw today, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.